all-in-one multi-platform gaming headsets have been around for quite some time. However, ones that also include ANC haven't, and in this respect the JBL Quantum 800 seems to fulfil that gap in the market. It comes in around £180 in the UK and around $200 in the US. Links in the description below will take you to your localised Amazon store. Also down there you'll find some alternatives, namely from Sennheiser, and you'll find links to my social media, so if you do use Instagram and Twitter, I'd very much appreciate a follow. And if you're interested in all electric or hybrid vehicles, do check out Totally EV. Your support would be equally appreciated. So let's kick things off and talk about what you get in the box. Now, first off, you've got this little Bluetooth dongle, which I've got no issues with, but it's quite long. So for those people who have laptops, you might find it's just a little bit elongated for your liking. You've also got a 3.5 millimeter jack connector with a slight off right angled uh, jack connector. And a, uh, and a straight line jack connector to connect up to the headset. It's worth bearing in mind you've also got a little control pod with a mic mute button and a, a volume adjustment which is nice to see. This will be useful for those people for example on Xbox. As for the USB type A to type C connector this is only purely used to charge the headset and therefore doesn't allow you to use the headset in a wired digital format. Therefore, if you have, let's say, if you're on PC and you're using the wireless dongle and the headset runs out of battery, you'll have to resort to a 3.5 millimeter jack, which is far from ideal for those people who don't have, let's say, a dedicated DAC or a sound card, and you might have some, let's say, interference using the built-in sound card of your motherboard or your laptop. Nevertheless, in terms of the battery life, you should expect around 14 hours with the uh, RGB lights disabled. So you might want to consider disabling it for that feature alone and recharging time will take around two hours. Now the RGB lights do stem around the headset, as you can see the ring and the JBL logo. We'll touch upon that in terms of customization through the software in just a bit, but it's nice to see that you can independently adjust both of them and there's a variety of different things you can do with that. Now let's talk about the, the headset's design itself because here I feel that JBL have done a decent job but I feel that they've missed the mark in a, a let's say fundamental way. The biggest thing over here is the fact that the headset itself is pretty weighty. It weighs 410 grams and therefore in comparison to other headsets out there which weigh half its weight or indeed have let's say a suspended design making it a little less weighty on top of your head make it for a far better pick for longer gaming sessions. Of course your mileage may vary but in my experience I felt that the headset's um, weight was well definitely felt. Furthermore the headset's clamp is a little bit too much in my opinion. I would have liked it to be a little bit more floaty around my head given the fact that if I game for over two hours with my glasses on, I feel a little bit more discomfort. Still, again, this is pretty much subjective, so I'm not going to take it too much against it, but just something I thought to point out. The headset's pads themselves, not only do they fold in in terms of the drivers, but they're also really, really soft and they're really comfortable. The top of the um, headset as well has got nice padding, which is nice to see, and therefore you don't feel this kind of plastic kind of digging into the top of your head, despite the um, headset's weight. I'm not too much of a fan of this kind of exposed cable, but nevertheless there must be a way of connecting left and right. I just wish JBL have done this a little bit better through, let's say, the headband design over here. Now the headband design itself is adjustable, so therefore I don't think people will have too many problems getting this sort of fit, given the fact that the cups can also fully swivel as well, make it, well, let's say, pretty good in terms of ergonomics. Now in terms of uh, actually using the headset, there's a flurry of different buttons and controls on the left and right hand side. Before getting to that, I would like to talk about the mic mute button. Now the mic mute button and the mic itself can be um, dragged up and down. You can hear this clicking sound. When it clicks, the light comes on and therefore means that it's muted. So therefore the microphone isn't transmitting when it's popped up and propped up in terms of its up position. However, you can also disable the microphone via button over here. If you were to press it, again, you can have the microphone popped up like this. And let's say someone comes into the room and you want to talk to them, you can just press that instead of having to flip it up each time. So it's nice to see that function is enabled uh, for you to use and the fact that JBL have included that. And no, before you ask, the, the microphone isn't removal, so just worth bearing in mind if you're going to be taking this on the go. 
Now, as for those buttons that I talked about, there's a few different ones to, to, to show. The, the top, you've got a ANC feature on and off, and also this can double up as the kind of like, not say ambient aware, but gives you like a kind of a mute, so it allows you to hear to like external uh, surroundings. And then you've got two dials over here. The dial, the first dial is to adjust between the chat volume or indeed the game volume, so you can go between the two and therefore chop and change. And this is a nice feature that's been included in headsets in the past, and it's nice to see it uh, featured in the Quantum 800. And then you've got the overall headset volume as well via a scroll wheel, as you might expect. And finally, that mic mute button. On the right hand side, it's more of the operational uh, values in terms of switching it on and off, and in terms of switching it between uh, Bluetooth or not. So, for example, if I were to switch it off and then switch it back on, what you'll notice is that its default configuration is to the wireless dongle. If, however, you want to connect it up to Bluetooth, you just press the Bluetooth button once, it will um, go blue and flash and there, therefore mean that it's on Bluetooth mode. So it's pretty instantaneous in order to switch. So if you want to switch and, and, and chop and change between devices, you can do so. And I forgot to mention on the left hand side, you've got a 3.5 mil jack and Type-C connector as well, which is used for charging only. And now we get onto the software and everything you can hear right now is coming directly from the headset. So moving on to the software, what you'll be able to see over here is that you've got a few different tabs on the left hand side and at the top you've got the kind of like a quick menu as to how your headset is configured. So right now I'm connected over the dongle over 2.4 gigahertz for example and ANC is disabled, so is Bluetooth. Now you've got different user profiles which you can create which is nice to see but what I want to focus on is the equalizer. Now you've got a 10 band equalizer and I really do like that sort of function being built in and you can see over here I've got an EQ that I've set of course your mileage may vary depending on your hearing however what I found is that the different tones depending on the ANC quality will depend on terms of the EQ so over here with no ANC enabled I have got quite a substantial boost in the bass tones again you might disagree with me but we're going to touch upon this in the sound quality section but all I'd like to say over here is that without ANC I do feel that the uh, headset requires a little bit of a boost but with ANC enabled I feel that the default level with the bass tones are pretty much bang on. Now in terms of lighting you can choose how the lighting is affected, you can choose a different tempo. I do find the interface a little bit, not say hard to understand, but just a little bit weird uh, to look at. Nevertheless you've got different um, uh, LED lighting modes that you can choose from and they will be reflected on either the logo or the ring itself or indeed you can synchronize them both together. I uh, personally quite like the spectrum because well it does run through the spectrum and I like it at its slowest tempo even though I feel the tempo is still pretty fast. You can of course disable the lighting in order to preserve as much battery as possible or you can indeed have it on if you want to let's say showcase the LEDs to the outside world. Now the spatial sound will touch upon this in the sound quality section in my in my tests I found off is the best way but you've got DTS as well you can enable and the quantum surround and the quantum surround is actually pretty comprehensive in terms of how you can adjust it in terms of the head diameter and the body height as well in order to adjust it to make it a little bit more or seemingly more towards you but as I said I don't personally use it because I didn't quite um, quite like it and I preferred actually having spatial sound disabled altogether. As for the microphone you can see right now I am talking through it you can also enable side stones so here um, right now as I'm talking I can hear myself you can adjust that and it's quite nice to see the ability to do that and you can adjust the mic volume as well also another thing I would like to point out is that if I were to flip up with the mute as I was speaking there but I realized of course you can't hear what I'm saying so when you do flip it up you can mute yourself and there's also a button found as well if I press it the mic as well as I was just trying to continue to speak so you guys can hear if there was like a cut in tone um, what I'm pleased to say is that you don't hear like a harsh cut off sound or some weird static sound that occurs when you mute your mic bit flipping up uh, the, the headset's mic or indeed pressing the button. Now past this of course we're going to talk about the microphone quality. The microphone quality on the whole I feel is well I'll say a little bit tinny, but it doesn't quite bring my voice to full fruition. So for example, if I take the Mod Mic 4.0, here you can see that the differences between the microphone qualities are pretty much night and day difference. The Mod Mic picks up my voice in a lot better way. And truthfully here, in my opinion, this is where the JBL headset falls short. Now it is worth considering that the Mod Mic is a wired mic and the wireless Mod Mic variant is a 
of substantially more expensive and as a result given the fact that you're having all in one system over here the JBL headset does a competent job I'm not going to say it does an incredible job the microphone is somewhat average if you want a better quality microphone then you're probably going to want to look at let's say the Sennheiser headset which provides a much better quality microphone which provides better recording quality or indeed if you'd want to go for um, a headphone and indeed uh, include a mod mic be it a wireless or a wired one then you'd got far superior recording quality there in comparison to any headset all-in-one solution. Now with the recording out of the way let's get on to ANC performance. Now this headset I don't think is claimed to be competing with flagship ANC headphones and as a result it came to no surprise that this headphone be it with its passive and active noise cancellation features couldn't really compete with, let's say, the Bose NC700 or, let's say, the Sony XM3s or XM4s, if, if you've heard them. In this respect, I think these headphones are more comparable to mid-to-budget tier Bluetooth ANC headphones. But in comparison to other headsets out there which do not have ANC altogether, the fact that you can get decent passive and active noise cancellation in one package make it a quite compelling option, specifically if you live in a, let's say, noisy neighborhood or no noisy household, it allows you to kind of focus in on your game or your movie watching or even listening to your music. Just basically trying to say over here, put it into perspective that these are not going to compete with top tier ANT headphones, but the fact that you've got that feature built in and the ability to enable it or disable it if you so wish is a great addition in my books and one that's definitely appreciated when it comes to gaming headsets. Now moving on to sound quality, let's talk about how ANC actually affects the overall sound frequency of this headset. Now what I will say is that if you enable ANC you will notice a noticeable boost in the mid and sub bass tones while having a little bit of an adverse effect on the mids. It's not too severe on the mid, so therefore I left the EQ similar in comparison or pretty much equivalent with ANC enabled or disabled. However, the bass, the same couldn't be said. With ANC disabled, I found myself having to EQ the bass upwards and therefore getting that sort of healthy punch that you'd expect from a JBL sort of headphone. With ANC enabled, it meant that that bass that was added on felt overpowering and just way too much and that as a result actually EQing a little bit down in certain frequencies resulted in the best overall sort of sound. Now with that all in mind let's get on to the breakdown of the sound frequencies. Just remember here that I am basing it on a 2.4 GHz connection and furthermore I'm using my own EQ which I showcased in the software section in order to give you my assessment of its overall sound frequencies. So with the sub bass I feel that here JBL's Quantum 800 does extend really um, well in that low end tones. It came to almost no surprise given this is a JBL headphone, but it was really nice to see that this headphone, or well, should I say headset, should I say, was able to extend on those low end tones really well and therefore giving you that low end um, emphasis. Furthermore, in terms of the mid bass, it's plenty present, and as I said before, if you were to enable ANC, you will definitely feel it in your ears, and it doesn't seem to overpower too much in terms of the mid range. Now, while the mid range is a little bit subdued and will require a little bit of EQ, it is still very much present and actually pretty impressive for a gaming headset at its price range. I was pleasantly surprised and the overall tonality that this gave in terms of the vocals and how the vocals came out on top when I was listening to music for example was well impressive to say the least. The highs also extend really well if anything you could add a little bit more just to add that little bit more sparkle at the top end but they don't sound harsh or sibilant no matter sort of what volume you push it at. As for the sound stage, which is one of the most important factors when it comes to a gaming headset, here I found that the Quantum 800 did a decent job. The instrument separation was good, so therefore you could hear footstep cues coming from left and right and you could differentiate pretty well in terms of left and right. The overall width and depth isn't going to compete with open back headsets for example, but it is pretty, pretty okay for closed back headset or a closed back headphone even. Here the width and depth is decent enough for you to again 
position your enemy, let's say, in a game, or indeed if you're listening to music or watching movies, you can get an accurate reproduction as to where the sound is coming from. So ultimately, when it came to the overall sound presentation, be it for music or even when it came to gaming, I was very much impressed with what the Quantum 800 was producing, specifically if you add a little bit of EQ. Even if you take the EQ out of the equation, ANC on or off, I think out the box, I think JBL have done a decent job. And so this all leads me on to my verdict. Here I feel that the JBL Quantum 800 does a decent job across all the range. Furthermore, it's a headset that's not only wireless and offers pretty good sort of wireless capabilities, but also one that will work across different platforms, but be it via Bluetooth, the wireless dongle, or indeed, let's say via wired 3.5mm jack connection. And this makes it pretty versatile. Add in the fact that you've got a competent microphone, a nice design, plenty of features and allow you to, let's say, adjust the overall volume of your chat or indeed the overall headset itself. And furthermore, the fact that you've also got ANC feature built into the headset, it makes this a quite a compelling option, namely at its price range, which at the time of doing this review sits at around £180 to $200. And at this price range and for the features that you're getting and the quality, namely in terms of the sound quality that you're getting, it's quite hard to think of a better headset that will tick all these right boxes. And as a result, the Quantum 800 gets my Best Buy award. Again, it's not quite flawless, but as far as wireless gaming headsets go, this is definitely one of my favourite and top headsets that I would recommend to family and friends or one that I would actually use myself if I was looking for a wireless gaming headset. So that's been my review, my honest, independent, unbiased, unpaid review. If you've liked it, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to see more, and of course, favor and share, as it always helps the channel grow. All right, guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care and goodbye.